Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the effects of Shilajit. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, welcome to Nutrition Library where we take an evidence and wellness-based approach to supplementation and nutrition. If you haven't already, do me a huge favor and hit that red subscribe button as well as that like button so that you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. All right, so Shilajit. I'm actually fairly impressed with this one and after doing uh, all the research that I have done over the past week, I actually had to do a couple of things. One, I actually had to go buy some more. So I hadn't taken this supplement in some time. And so after doing the research on this and seeing all the potential benefits and effects uh, that come along with Shilajit consumption, um, I went and, and bought actually a couple of tubs of it. And the second thing that I had to do was to actually update my hormone optimization guide that you guys can actually download um, through a link in the description, but uh, I actually had to kind of alter that a little bit because of the breadth of evidence that there is on Shilajit's ability to actually optimize hormone production in men. But before I get ahead of myself, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the five primary health effects of Shilajit as well as the research that backs up those effects and the proposed mechanisms as to uh, why Shilajit actually affects the body and how it affects the body in the way that it does. Now, the first health benefit that we're gonna talk about today uh, is Shilajit's ability to increase and improve muscle mass, lean mass, as well as muscular strength. Now, this study in particular that is fairly promising showed the ability of Shilajit to preserve muscle mass and muscle strength uh, while taking uh, the participants that went through this study through an exhaustive exercise routine. Now, the reason this study is so special is because it actually used recreationally active males. And it is for any of you guys that have done any research on anything before know how difficult it is to come by compounds that have actually been studied in recreationally active people. You just don't see it. And the reason for that is that typically speaking, recreationally active men are usually fairly healthy. And so you just don't see a very large margin of benefit with specific compounds in this specific subpopulation. However, this study did use recreationally active men and did find that while these participants were taking about 500 milligrams of a purified Shilajit compound, uh, that while they went through the course of this exhaustive exercise routine for several weeks, that there was a retention in maximal strength as well as maximal muscle uh, retention as well. Now, there are probably several mechanisms that are at play here, but one of the more interesting um, mechanisms that has been proposed by a different study is that Shilajit has the ability to improve and increase the genetic markers of improved muscle hypertrophy as well as muscle retention. Now, again, this study is fairly promising as well because it was uh, in human subjects. Um, now, these subjects were obese that went through this study in particular. However, when you take these two studies and put them together, it does show a promising ability of Shilajit to one, preserve muscle function as well as increase the genetic markers and potential for muscle growth and strength as well. Now, the second health benefit and health effect that we're gonna talk about today in this video is Shilajit's ability to actually increase uh, testosterone as well as fertility in men. Now, this study in particular showed a very, very unique ability of Shilajit given over the course of several weeks uh, to increase testosterone in healthy men. Now, again, 
For any of you guys that have done research on compounds that are used to increase testosterone, shilajit and ashwagandha are literally the only two compounds that have any research behind them in improving and increasing testosterone in healthy men, which shows just how special not only this study in particular is, but how special shilajit is as a compound as well. Now, this study also showed the ability of shilajit to increase testosterone levels in infertile men, as well as improved fertility by a very significant degree. And so shilajit is fairly rapidly becoming one of my most favorite compounds in conjunction with some other compounds to improve testosterone function for one, myself, but also to folks that I am making recommendations to on a regular basis. Now, I don't think that the mechanisms that are at play here are fully understood yet, but some of the proposed mechanisms that are in play are one, the antioxidant capacity of shilajit, specifically as a testicular antioxidant. And it also appears that shilajit is a fairly reliable uh, source of several mineral compounds that also seem to be at play here. Um, and so for any of you guys that have seen my other videos. I am a fairly big fan of mineral consumption specifically for hormonal health. Uh, the effects of zinc, magnesium, and boron specifically have been repeatedly shown uh, to improve testicular function and hormone function in both men and women. But on top of that, shilajit also seems to be a pro-dopaminergic compound, uh, meaning that it increases the function of dopamine in specific regions of the brain, which typically speaking is going to suppress prolactin, which is typically going to have a pro-testosterone effect in the body. Now, the third health benefit that we're going to talk about today is Shilajit's ability to improve exercise performance as well. Now, the evidence here is only from rodent studies at the moment. However, I do think it is fairly promising just because of the mechanisms of action that are at play here. But in this study in particular, there was an improvement in overall exercise performance in the rodents that were put into a forced swim test. And this study was hypothesizing that it was because of an improvement in mitochondrial function. So uh, for those of you that are familiar with the mitochondria, the mitochondria is essentially like the powerhouse of the cell that produces uh, ATP, which is your most basic fundamental form of energy in the body. And so throughout these two studies, there was uh, several improvements in the markers surrounding mitochondrial function. And so the researchers of both of these studies were hypothesizing that the improvement in exercise performance that was being observed in these rodent trials was because uh, of an improvement in mitochondrial function. Now, this one is super interesting to me because I am aware of only a handful of other compounds that have been shown um, in any type of living model to improve mitochondrial function. And so when you add this possible health benefit on top of the uh, proven effect to uh, muscle retention and muscle recovery as well as uh, the improvement in testosterone function within the body, shilajit is quickly becoming one of my most favorite compounds. Now, the fourth health benefit, and uh, I would probably just classify it as a possible health benefit because uh, the evidence here is also just performed in rodents at the moment. However, the fourth possible health benefit is that there is a pro-cognitive benefit as well. Now, even though the evidence here and the research here is extremely preliminary, I did think it was notable to put this in here simply because of the mechanisms that are at play. And that is that one, there is an apparent pro-dopaminergic effect with Shilajit, which is super important to me because um, when I got my test back a few months ago, my hormone panel that was done, I was extremely high in prolactin, which um, isn't that surprising to me just because of the stress that I've been under the last several months with introducing a new baby into our home and 
uh, an extreme lack of sleep that comes along with that. But uh, again, my prolactin was super high. And so one of the main ways that you can uh, reduce prolactin is with pro uh, dopaminergic compounds like mucunipurines, uh, which is really one of the only compounds that I was at the moment aware of that was pro dopaminergic. But it does appear that shilajit um, is in the same class of compounds. Now, I also like pro dopaminergic compounds because they also improve um, executive functioning uh, and things like motivation as well, which I think is uh, something that every man should be desiring to optimize. But what I also find interesting about shilajit is that it also apparently is to some degree activating the glycine and GABA receptors, which are two inhibitory receptors, um, which kind of makes sense with a lot of the subjective experiences that I'm hearing uh, online in Reddit forums and things of that nature is that it's uh, Shilajit is super grounding, which can be explained by the fact that it is activating some inhibitory uh, receptors as well as some of the more uh, motivating receptors like the dopaminergic receptors. And so uh, the evidence here isn't fully robust yet, but I did think it was super interesting and worthy of noting here. Now, the fifth and final health benefit that we're gonna talk about in this video is Shilajit's ability to improve general health. Now, there are a handful of studies that have been performed in both rodents and human trials that show uh, Shilajit's ability to affect blood lipid profile, uh, triglycerides, as well as HDL and LDL cholesterol, as well as improving just general antioxidant profiles within the body. And so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this one in particular. However, I did think it was worthy to note just because um, when I am personally making decisions on compounds to take, I'm always looking for compounds that are checking multiple boxes. And it appears that Shilajit is just one of those compounds uh, that not only improves uh, hormone function, athletic performance, executive and cognitive performance, but also is just in general a healthy compound to consume. So this is personally one that I'm gonna be adding into my personal stack. Uh, and I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon until some further research comes out. But other than that, guys, that's all I have for you today. Again, if you're interested in that PDF on ways to optimize your hormone, check out the link that's in the description. And if you are interested in getting a blood panel done, which I highly, highly, highly recommend, there is a link in the description as well for that. But other than that, I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.